So, Rishab, go ahead. So, what I was saying was to to give useful metrics in that presentation, in the um, in the DevOps. Uh, what is its name? I'm sorry, I forgot. The DevOps uh, event hosted by Cloudbees. So, uh, to to give meaningful insight uh, metrics, I would need to profile uh, an instance which would have uh, jobs which would simulate a. Uh, a, a a near real world use case of the plugin and then i could then we could use the updated git plugin and with the updated git branch source plugin to to see to measure the differences in performance in uh, in a freestyle job in a multi branch project and and in that way we we for ourselves it will it will be a great exercise to understand what kind of uh, uh, changes we are expecting once we introduce this uh, class inside git plugin this change and for the presentation i will be able to give some uh, useful result and that would be great for then the project so uh, so uh, we would have to figure out how to profile the uh, uh, the uh, the jenkins instance running on your machines because I have the access to the local host 8080 port directly. I'm not sure if I can start uh, the uh, instances using, I don't have the permission. I'm not sure how would I start the instances with, but I know how to start them if I am starting them using the war, uh, the Jenkins war. So I can use the Java command to run it and then I uh, append the uh, JFR uh, optional arguments, the Java flight recorder optional arguments. It, it comes packaged with the JDK 11. So we won't have to add anything else for it, but we do need to run. I only know how to run it from the Jenkins war. Uh, uh, from uh, for for Docker image, I'm not sure how I would do it, how, how I would proceed. But that's something we might need to figure out because for me personally, if I if I'm profiling it for some jobs, I would um, I can do it for some jobs, but not for so. As far as I know, you have a lot of jobs in the, in that instance, which would automatically be be profiled, and we would, I think, have a, a huge range of data on how uh, the plugin is performing with the changes. So well, what that's if, what I would you be yes. willing to consider not using flight recorder, but just using timestamp reports from the build logs? They are only one second granularity, but would that be enough to give us a fast approximation, then we would just, yes. we can enable time stamper. And, and I think we could even in that case then rely on some, some repositories we already have that are of known size, like the Git client plugin repository, which I think is less than five megabytes still. And mm -hmm. the Git plugin repository, which is, I suspect greater 19. than five meg, it's, it's how big? 19 MB, I think. Oh, good. Okay. So it's, and then we could take Jenkins.io, which I think is about 60 now. And there we've got three. Jenkins.io is around 400, I think. As far oh, as well, I that's know. even worse. Yeah, that's yeah. even, even great. Okay. So if Jenkins.io is that big, it's even, uh, we've got those. And by choosing those, those are repositories that already have a Jenkins file. And so, mm -hmm we could enable a multi-branch project on that Jenkins instance for each of those. Some of them already have it. And therefore the cache will already be available. We don't even have to have you implement anything in the branch sources for that on that instance, because the cache will already be there. Okay, but, uh, but if we are going to do this whole exercise, wouldn't we want to do both of the things to run it for a freestyle job? If we don't have a multi-branch project for all of the cases and this would not just be for the results but for the uh, because uh, i have interactively tested this feature but the maintainers you the mentors haven't so i think it would still be it would be better if if i uh, if i provide the implemented brand source plugin oh, and then oh. we can test yes yes That's wholehearted agreement absolutely yeah I, I i don't want to say that we should limit that you don't do it but rather, if, if you need, for instance, my DevOps World Talk has to be recorded today. <laughs> I don't know when okay. they told you you have to record yours, but I'm, I'm in a session this afternoon recording my talk. 
So, so okay. I've got to get ready for it, practice it, prepare it, et cetera. And, and so I thought if you're on a very limited time scale, there, there may be things we could do to get you the data we, you need even faster. But if, if they haven't said, oh, mm -hmm. you've got to be re recording it today, no problem. We can, we can do as much or as little as will help. Earlier, they did. They did say that we have to do it till Friday. And I was notified about it on uh, Monday. So I thought that I possibly cannot do this till Friday. But then uh, I asked Oleg. So he said that uh, we will, pro since the GSOC students were notified uh, at a later stage, they would uh, give us later dates. And I, I, have, been, I have booked the uh, recording session for 28th of uh, August. So I think oh, I have oh. something. You've got lots of time. Wow, you'll I, almost I be done time. with a project by then. Okay, great. Yes, All so right. we would have time. So I chose that date uh, for that purpose. So um, I think I should start the uh, meeting with the agenda. I was. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. So, so uh, first, let's uh, let's talk. Let's start with uh, the PRs we have. The first PR uh, which we are done with is the, uh, the pull request on the addition of unsupported command in the git client plugin, which has been merged by Mark. So uh, reviewed merged. We also added the test for it, which I'm very grateful for. So uh, that has been done. That PR has been merged. Uh, the second, all uh, the other three PRs which we have, they are open right now. The biggest one is the git tool chooser and the git tool chooser test. Uh, the second one is the unsupported command, uh, the, the, the usage of that class within git plugin. I, uh, I have some work on that PR. The third one is the extension implementation on GitHub brand source plugin. So I'm going to start with uh, the, the biggest PR, the, the, the major concern for us, the git tool chooser and its test. Uh, so, so there has been a change in design for that PR and, uh, and the reason for that change in design is, is, a, is an observation, brilliant observation by Omkar and uh, Fran. They both pointed out uh, uh, a huge, um, I would say a hole, a gaping hole inside the, the Git tool chooser's implementation. And I will go through what, you know, what is the problem and how have I uh, solved it. I just, I think I've, I've added the comments in the commit message and I would, I would just show that and then explain what the uh, decision, the change is. So, so currently, so we are talking about uh, Git tool here. Git tool is basically a class which is encapsulating the details about the Git implementation, which is going to be used to create a client uh, in the Git plugin. So, Currently, a Git client, we know that a Git client is initialized with a Git implementation. Now, there are two decision factors which decide what implementation will be used. The first is the user. The second is the system. The user has an option to choose, decide between Git, JGit, or JGit Apache. These are the three options they have. And if they do not choose, we provide the default implementation as the Git implementation if it is available. If it is not available, we will, we have the JGit implementation shipped within the plugin. We would provide that. The second decision after the user chooses its, uh, its implementation, its preferred implementation, the second decision is taken by the system. That is that it takes the user's choice and then it validates with the particular agent or wherever the system is working to check if that particular uh, user's choice is available within the system or not. Now, what is happening with the introduction of Git tool chooser is that we have added another decision variable to this whole process of providing the implementation from the user to the client, to, to the process of making the client. We've added another decision variable, which is the Git tool chooser, but the Git tool chooser was not considering what the system is evaluating and then Eva then providing the implementation. What the Git tool chooser was considering was that, okay, I will tell what the best implementation is, but before telling that, I will check if that implementation is installed or not. 
but we are not seeing what the system is already provide has already provided and 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 shortly we will see how that will break some use use cases existing if we do not uh, in, if we do not take into consider consideration what the system is providing to us so so the change in design is basically what i'm doing is that i'm in the constructor in the initialization of the class i'm adding another argument which is uh, the executable path of uh, the um, the implementation which the user has provided so uh, so how this uh, works within the git plugin before the git tool chooser is that the user would provide for git for git the cli git user can provide the name of the implementation and provide the path within the system that is how uh, it is installed so uh, the git plugin uses the path provided by the uh, by the user that is what it uses to feed the git client initializer and then it initializes the git client that that is how it works so what we need is we need that executable path and then we can decide if what we have to preserve what how our decision is not affecting the existing case and um, and uh, i think the best way to uh, to understand that is i let's just look at the test cases i've added so that those are the scenarios where we can understand how this is affected so uh, i will okay this is the test Class, yes. So we have two scenarios here. Uh, the first scenario is uh, the size of the repository is less than five MB. The Git tool chooser will recommend JGit. Now this is from Git tool chooser side. We have some uh, variable decision variables we have to consider before that. Those are, let's say, the user has installed the installation is called my Git. and its path is set has to be user bin git earlier if user was providing this path i would not consider it i would just say okay give jgit because the size is less than 5 mb git to chooser would uh, would provide jgit but uh, let's just say that we what if there is a scenario where we have to use git but we are not using the path for it we are giving the name for it and maybe that works here because it is linked so git would work in a system where user where git is installed in user bin for a linux system but it might not work if there is a difference if there is a if it is installed at a different path instead of the user bin which might be unlikely but it's still uh, it's still a case i i think please uh, interrupt me if 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 my assumptions are wrong Uh, so um, so so if this is the case that the user has installed uh, the git tool with uh, a different name and a different path what we would do is so what we should expect is in this case we don't have jgit in this system although we will always have jgit in the system but uh, for this particular use case i have removed i this Jen jenkins instance all only has uh the uh, git tool which is the my git tool which is configured by the user so the tool now will uh, recommend user bin git instead of and it 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 should recommend jgit because the size is less than 5 mb but we do not have installed jgit in the system that is why it is not able to provide it so this is the first use case now the second use case is what uh, what if we have the same git installation and we have jgit within the system then i think the expected behavior is that it should provide jgit as the um, expected implementation and one thing i i am missing here is that while writing the git tool chooser i i did not uh, investigate uh, the fact that we do not we should not we are not we should not provide the implementation name we are providing the implementation the, the path where the implementation is is installed for the git client the git client does not take the name of the implementation it takes the path of that implementation 
that only matters it is limited to the scope for git for jgit and for jgit apache it doesn't matter the path is same as the name that is what i what i've seen in the git tool uh, jgit tool class which is implemented on the uh, extended from the git tool class um for git it matters because the name and the path where it is installed can be different so this is this this awareness which i did not have earlier to uh, the observation by omkar and fran uh, was something i now realized and that is why uh, the git tool chooser is now aware of that fact and it will provide the path instead of the name for jgit and jgit apache it will still be the same it is equivalent to the name but for git it will provide the path instead of the name and um, so i have uh, some more use cases where if J i was not cons yes mark okay so so i think i think the test that you've got on screen right now the top of the screen one indicates indicates a potential problem if this test is passing it is passing uh, uh oh no no sorry not the the one down so the next one down the one that uses jgit apache Okay so mm -hmm. so I, excellent that you wrote these tests this is brilliant thank you so much to Fran and to Omkar for detecting the problem the mm -hmm. in this case oh oh no okay it's i see so in this case you've got command line git jgit and jgit apache and it chooses mm -hmm. jgit do you have a test which has only command line git and jgit apache uh no i don't i have mm -hmm. one with only jgit apache but i don't have one with oh, okay okay so 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 long as so it looks if you've got the well if you could just safety check for my comfort that if cli get and jgit apache are both available but jgit is not jgit apache should be chosen because it is a it is a plug okay. compatible replacement mm -hmm. for jgit right so so you've got the case at line 300 where you are mm -hmm. correctly choosing jgit apache so that's a big win hmm. but yes i actually i so what the decision i took was that if we have jgit and jgit apache i would use jgit i would not use jgit apache if and, and that is the correct them. decision that is absolutely correct if we don't yes. have jgit enabled and only have jgit Then, apache yeah. we should still choose jgit apache for small repositories i th uh, because yes i i yes sorry sorry please no no they they are they are functionally equivalent except for some relatively subtle details in terms of the authentication protocols used talking to a remote mm. http server and i have missed that case i just realized that if if i would have jgit if i have to recommend jgit and available uh, installations are git and jgit apache i would recommend git i would not ah, recommend okay jgit. so then so then your tests have exposed the case that i think we want with Is, one handle differently yes. good very good yes i i have noted that case and i will implement that as well uh, so uh, so these so, are the scenarios yes omkar um jgit is always available for jenkins installation or no 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 well it's it's not always enabled so oh, the user must it. right it, it is by default disabled and because it is by default disabled it is not in the descriptor list as a set okay. installation so so the test that that now it's actually the code is available but because it's disabled they have to choose to enable it in order to get the benefit and uh, so this was the scenario when the git tool chooser has a repository of size less than 5 mb now if the scenario is that the repository size is greater than 5 mb uh, cli git should be recommended and uh, i think the case is again they uh, they show us that if we have no tool installed in the jenkins instance i assume that the git executable would can be named uh, so it would not it would be named git not uh, since the user has not provided the path so uh, then the um, the get tool chooser would recommend git and if there is a case where uh, jgit is installed and git is not installed installed in the system and it has to recommend git 
but since the system doesn't have git it would provide jgit it's just uh, i would say an exhaustive li list of the possible scenarios we could have and um, and uh, maybe they do not make sense uh, in a lot of cases but it's it's a possible uh, scenario we could have and so on yes, this one can you help me understand or i can ask separately what what is the what do you gain by the reference to the credentials which are here the sample repo so, in it uh, sample repo in it is for the project i am building so i for this okay. for, so i need two things for, so since we have enabled authentication now authentication we provide uh, credentials to the uh, plugins who, who will implement the extension point we need to send them two things and the first is the context uh, of the job and the second is uh, the credentials id so to build to to have the context i need to build a project so so that i have a context and uh, so that is why i am initializing a sample repository and then i'm building a project in it the function is given it's it's uh, the later part of the code and uh, the credentials i i saw this in one of the tests already written in git plugin this is a way to so initially before the test start i have uh, add the rate before uh, a method which would initialize a uh, a local credential store and it would have a, a, a credential called github with the id github a username password uh, sample and um, and what would happen what i expect is I actually expect since so uh, we so our responsibility is to provide the credentials ID and the context. It's the plugins, the other plugins' responsibility to use them and to validate. In this particular test class, I have test extensions. I have implemented implemented those extensions just so that we can use them. But I haven't included any logic which checks those credentials and um, and. Uh, validates them because that is that would be the responsibility of the of the github branch source plugin and i'm not sure if if there's a point of validating them through our logic i i am not sure if we should do that right now it just checks if the current if the repository url contains github or not that's the uh, it's not the right logic to uh, check it but it's just for this test class um so uh, so that is why I am building a project so that we can have the context and then we have the credentials we provide to the Git tool chooser. This is the second point, the change in design I wanted to discuss. I discussed uh, the implementation part first, the Git tool implementation part. Uh, so uh, you can look at the test cases and um, and uh, we can see how uh, what cases I've missed. But this this is this is a big change which I missed while creating this class. And I, um, I have added it currently. It's pushed. I, I locally built it in my system, and it is the tests are running fine. So we, uh, we I've missed one case which Mark has pointed out. I I'll add that shortly. And uh, I think for uh, this change in design, uh, this is what I wanted to um, uh, say. Any any further questions on? this particular change any concerns possible concerns i have i have missed or maybe if if you later look at the pr and uh, review it then uh, i think that's that's the better way right okay so uh, the second thing is the authentication is basically um, providing uh, user credentials to the plugin now uh, with this change we have certain issues i want to discuss the first is that there are multiple ways um, multiple credentials multiple ways the user can create credentials and uh, from git plugins perspective we have uh, i'm not sure maybe more than two or three valid ways of creating user credentials but when we provide those credentials to the github branch source plugin the GitHub branch source plugin will only uh, consume username, password type of credentials, and it would not consume any other type of credential we may throw, we may provide uh, to it. So that will limit our uh, 
I would say it would limit the cases we would cater in terms of optimization. Um, I could not find a way around to, uh, so there was one possibility suggested by Mark that maybe the Git brand source plugin um, maps the URL URLs with the credentials. So if I provide the GitHub branch source a URL, a valid uh, repository, remote repository URL, it could possibly look at the credentials it might store. But uh, again, I think for that, a user in a Jenkins instance, the user would uh, have a pro GitHub organization project and would have to set up those credentials. That is the assumption we 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 took. But I cannot find any way uh, where only the repository URL is enough to get the credentials. What I uh, what I'm seeing is we need the context and we need uh, the credentials ID. So um, so that is a concern. I'm not sure if there is a way to expand the um, the type of credentials we are. Um, Sending also what what I saw in the GitHub API, the Java API implemented in the GitHub brand source plugin. Just a second, I. Not sure where so just I... a point of reference, I think we were putting the credentials in the Git plugin to support freestyle projects, right? That's the primary reason why it's in the Git plugin, and so like yes. the GitHub branch source would already have its own credentials and a project would have been configured with project uh, credentials for that project, right? Um, a GitHub branch source plugin, uh, a project, yes, it would. But then, uh, okay, so I have a question related to that, uh, uh, to that statement. If someone is configuring a project using the GitHub plugin, branch source plugin, it will, it will not be needing the Git, Git, Git plugin for any, yep. for, yep. For the branch source for scanning the branches, or uh, for because as far as I've seen the code, it they have implemented their own SCM APIs. They're not. Right. They're not they wouldn't need a credential from the Git plugin. Right. They would not, but then they would not be able to. Uh, uh, we will not be able to um, actually use that, uh, use the performance improvements because the Git plugin will not be will will not be used in that case if if we just have a jenkins in jenkins instance where a user has created a project using the git brand source plugin i am not sure uh, the optimizations we are talking about they will be used because the git git brand source plugin is uh, has its own scm api uh, implemented and it would not need the git plugin for any uh, for any case or am i wrong here I think for the cloning activities and stuff like that, it still uses all the Git plugin stuff, right? Or I, I, the API stuff is primarily for like, hey, do I have new branches? Hey, like, are there other things going on? They're also doing like the reach out stuff that we're trying to do, like the estimation. That's all the API driven stuff. But I think all the Mark Mark can go go ahead. He knows better than the, than me probably. <laughs> yeah, just Justin's got it right that when when, when a branch source needs to ask REST API questions to, to as part of a, a multi-branch pipeline job, for example, it uses the credential that the user provided as part of the multi-branch pipeline job definition. But when it comes time to clone a, a repository, it goes down to the Git plugin and says, clone the repository for me. And so, but then it provides the credential that it has to the Git plugin. So I think that supports Rishab, your, your assertion that the Git plugin has to be willing to provide the credential uh, out to, uh, to others who may need it, like well, the, the it, branch source. But it wouldn't need the credential, right? Because it would already have one of its own for scanning. Well, it, I think, I think the, the, the flow of information is that the scanning has a credential passes that credential down to the Git plugin. The Git plugin can use it for clone purposes, but if the Git plugin, since it has the credential, now needs to ask a question related to, hey, give me the, AP, give me the, give me the size of this repository, the estimate of the size of this repository, 
it can hand that credential back to the branch source and say, here's the credential, use it. So it, it doesn't, I think it's a, a simple approach as what, what Rishab is planning to do. Pass in the, pass, pass back the credential that the Git plugin got however it got it. I see, this is just flow control within the guts of how they're I, interacting. I think so, yeah. Okay. But but if there's a case, what Justin has just said, if there's a case where um, we have a multi-branch project configured by GitHub, so GitHub has the credentials, and then it is passing those credentials to the Git plugin to clone, and then we are again passing those credentials. We are not those credentials. Uh, would we be passing the same credentials? I'm actually not, uh, for, for for me to understand that, I think I need to understand the credentials API better. So if so, the credential store, which stores the credentials, would it be common for the Git plugin and the uh, Git branch source plugin in the same Jenkins instance? As far as I know, it is. There is the, the credential store is shared by, as far as I understand it, all the components inside a, a Jenkins instance. Okay. Yeah. So there- That's pluggable. There, you can so then have there is credential a, types. But, yeah. Okay, so there there must be a way for us to. So if we so we could maybe add a functionality before sending the credentials, we could check the store, and um, but how would we know that we have credentials for this particular case? Well, in fact, for GitHub branch source, I believe it also requires that you have. Mm -hmm an actual username password credential. I think that's a limitation of that plugin. Uh, you can't do check, like, you need scanning necessarily by username password because you can't do scanning by an SSH key, for example. That's what so I you, saw as well. Yeah, yes. so I mean, you, you kind of have a guarantee that you have a credential that, uh, unless it's anonymous access, uh, you kind of have a guarantee that you have a credential that can reach out to the API from the GitHub branch source configuration of the project. Okay, so then I would need to right. create a function which would uh, check the credential store for a use. I'm not, uh, what I'm not able to uh, figure out right now, maybe I need some more time to understand it, is that how would I uniquely identify those credentials from the perspective of Git plugin? How would Git plugin have that information? I, or maybe the Git plugin would have that information because the Git branch source plugin has passed down that information to me and then I can use it uh, yeah. to check the story. Either that or the GitHub branch source plugin provides you an answer based on the results of the query. Like either one of those would work, but okay. I don't think Git plugin would, would know that or have have a way and probably shouldn't reach back in to get GitHub branch source to try and figure out like mappings of, of things. But the Git plugin can look at the store and if it has the credentials which are passed down by the GitHub branch source plugin, it can it can use them if, uh, if they are mapped with the store. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm wondering what the Git plugin would even do with those credentials. Wouldn't the GitHub would branch source plugin do the work? Branch source plugin again. So the problem is that if we need to send uh, when the ex the extension we we are implementing it's it's in a static con it's a static class we mm -hmm. need to initialize a GitHub uh, uh, pro uh, object which is basically uh, uh, it encapsulates the APIs we have for GitHub Java APIs. So it needs the credential. So at that point of time, it needs the credentials and I cannot take those credentials within the GitHub branch source plugin because that would mean that I have to provide a non-static object to a sta static class. So what I understand, what my understanding is that the extensions, if they are static classes, we're not meant to take um, I don't know, information from the object, individual objects of that particular instanti instantiation. Or maybe uh, there's something I'm missing here. 
my 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 question is i thought about using if the github branch source initially i thought that if the github branch source plugin has the credentials why not use them uh for the extension but how i was limited there was that the extension is in when i uh, implement uh, an extension point it is a static class and uh, and uh, those the credentials id for a particular uh, user credential uh, would be uh, non static that means for that particular instance how would the, how would i communicate it with the extension within the github branch source plugin is what i could not figure out at that point of time and the second thing my confusion was the context so i what makes sense is that the git plugin should provide the context where the uh, the branch source plugin should scan with which the branch source plugin should scan the credentials because that is the git plugin is using those functionalities and the job which is it is which it is running should be the context it is providing to the branch source plugin is what i understand uh, for scanning the credentials correctly so i think that's the other way though i think github branch source is going to inform git plugin of context right ignore me maybe i'm wrong no i i'm just <laughs> trying to understand because yeah. uh, frankly i'm i'm i don't have a uh, i don't have a good knowledge of the credentials api i i just i just learned enough to implement uh sure. the uh, this the scanning abilities but i don't have i think i need to study more how um context okay. and uh, think off the top of my head i think it's fairly normal if you need to use your credentials id in a plugin that you would potentially get that credentials id get it within your context and and then use it Um, uh, so Justin, you are right here, but my issue is that I I want to show you the issue through code. So the estimator. So I have created this extension inside the Git branch source plugin. Now this is a this is a static class. How do I access the context of the current branch source plugin and its credential ID and provide it? here where i am trying to connect with github uh, the github uh, apis and then uh, retrieve the size of the repository how would i transfer that information within the plugin uh what in, what information uh the context so if if you're talking about using the context uh, uh provided by the github branch source plugin and the credentials id of that plugin only then we need to provide those info those two info, uh, two parameters to this extension where it is trying to query the size of the repository how would i so right now how this thing is working is that these three parameters are being provided by the git plugin to the git branch source plugin and then it uses the context and the credentials id to scan for the credentials once it finds them it creates a connection and it gets us the size that is how this is working but if we are thinking of use if we know that uh, if there is a project uh, created by the github branch source plugin then we would have the credentials uh, within the plugin then how would i use its I credential id and the context for this extension is something i i am not able to understand currently yeah that one might be a particularity to, depending on the plug in itself maybe i don't know if there's are there common pattern do you guys know if there's common patterns for some of these on how their credential ids are attached to their context i would think you would need to use your item context to to retrieve that from branch, branch source plug in itself or for the instance. Yeah, I confess I don't know this I thought that that Rishab this was working the way you had hoped and so I'm not I'm not seeing the compelling reason to change what what this is doing right now. It is it is working so we are getting this size for uh, I have tested it with a private repository and a public repository. So 
if I configure the kit plugin to use a username password credential, I am able to retrieve the size and I am able to uh, run the Git tool to chooser as expected. Um, but this, the whole discussion started from the, the issue that we are narrowing our scope of usability once we are only limited to the username password credential. But I, I, as, I think that, that is, that's not a choice we can make. It's, it's what the GitHub brand source plugin supports. And then, so, so there was a possibility discussed by Justin that what if we use the credentials in the context within the brand source plugin that would uh, make us uh, less dependent on what the Git plugin is providing. And um, because we know that the GitHub brand source plugin would definitely have the credentials if it is being used in the Jenkins instance, the Git plugin might have it or might not, even if it does have the credentials, it might have the type of credentials which are not supported by the GitHub branch source plugin. So that is also, so, so that is why uh, if we are, th if we are passing down the credentials from the Git plugin to the Git branch source plugin, that is how the current flow is working. We are limited uh, to the user's choice of using username and password credentials in the Git plugin. So the problem what the problem is that the user might they will not know about this performance improvement will not know that using the username password credentials would actually enable something which the user doesn't even know so the point is that if the user is using the git branch source the github branch source plugin uh, the the user will be forced to use a uh, username uh, password credentials and would add that in the jenkins instance but if the user is uh, if we are looking at this problem from the Git plugins perspective, from a user who is only using the Git plugin and not aware of the Git branch, GitHub branch source plugin, for that user, he he will use what whatever uh, way of credentials, whatever type of credentials they use, and it may be username password, it may might might not be. For us, it will only help if it's username password credentials. That's it's a what primary challenge. Doing. Yeah, I think the primary challenge is going to be usability for GitHub branch source. Like, if you think about how you would maybe need to set that, because if, and maybe I'm not understanding this correctly on how you set this up for Git plugin and how this would look. Uh, but I think if I'm understanding this correctly, if you're setting up a multi branch project or something like that, you would select your credential for your multi branch project. And then you'd also have to like we would have to warn people select the same credential that you picked for your branch source so that it aligns in terms of username password and token right okay. is that, that's your concern but too right Michelle, or? it is but then that's an that's an added responsibility to the user of git plugin who doesn't who is not aware of the performance improvement and it's it's supposedly a hidden feature the user is not aware of something wouldn't the user uh, uh, think about why is it happening? Why would it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure from the perspective of uh, user how it would go. But uh, but then if we have a multi-branch project, we wouldn't even need the credentials. We wouldn't need this API. We would have the cache. So I think if we have a multi-branch project, we would not have to worry about querying the size of the repository via uh, a REST API. So I, I think this, this needs more thinking and uh, probably to clarify, to have a clear, uh, a clearer discussion, uh, maybe I can make a diagram with the current flow of authentication, how uh, the Git plugin is expecting, how uh, the size, how is it working so that then maybe you, um, the mentors can review the diagram and the current implementation, the way it's working. Maybe because the PR has had, I think it's greater than 60 messages. It's, it's a long conversation. It might be difficult for uh, people who haven't reviewed it yet. So um, I, I would add a, a diagram to it, attach a, di a diagram with uh, the current flow of authentication. And uh, in meanwhile, I'll, I'll think more about uh, how, uh, so, so currently it, it's, it's a, it's a non-blocking, um, this discussion is non-blocking to the Git tool choosers release if if you're talking about that because uh, because the uh, so the Git tool chooser expects the size 
of a repository from the rest apis it is able to do that condition is that it needs a username uh, username password type of credential but if we have that we are able to do it. so uh, we can say that we support that currently but meanwhile we can look into how we can expand that um, the scope of usability here yeah cuz i mean i guess you have a couple of pieces of work and i think to mark's point like if this works for now like you can refine the extension thing as its own probably cuz the git tool chooser for git itself seems like its own big chunk of work that we've been working on for a while mm. so i think if this yeah. works for now like probably refining the extension is seems reasonable yes yeah, so um mark's thinking so this so so currently after this discussion and the prs the changes i've done uh, the status of git tool, tool chooser is interactively i have uh, the current changes changes i've done i've tested the git tool chooser with uh, with multiple implementations and um, in the case of a cache cache repository if we have that then it should uh, use that to estimate the size and i have also uh, used uh, uh, a modified version of the github branch source plugin which is local in my instance and i've uh, i've used that to interactively test that the git tool chooser is able to recommend uh, the optimal implementation while we are checking out a repository using the git plugin so so i have been able to done that the next step after the review we have for the current changes is for me to uh, instantiate to to add the git tool chooser everywhere the client is being created within the git plugin so i i haven't done that and the reason was that i wanted git tool chooser to be a functionally um work working class before we uh, we decide to add it at places it should work how it's supposed to and after i think what justin and omkar have pointed out i i assume that we are um and one case i missed which mark has pointed out i will add that i assume we are um um code wise we are done with git tool chooser um but i again i think the mentors need to review it first there might be uh, things i've missed uh there are some more there are more test cases i have to add uh, and those are related uh, to uh, unsupported extensions when we are using that in the environment unit test cases do not cover those cases where we are using unsupported extensions and jkit should not be uh, uh, recommended for those cases so i i have to add those test cases test cases wise that is what i haven't added for the current change which is uh, using the existing the system provided path git executable path and then deciding uh to uh, implement to recommend the implementation i have i have added those cases i've just shown you the cases uh, that the latest commit in the um, in our pr number 931 uh apart from all of this i have one more thing i needed to discuss was the extension work so that is something something i am doing parallelly and i have been uh, i have been contact i have been uh working with liam on uh, on merging the pr for the github branch source plugin i was stuck at creating uh, unit test cases for that because um so it was i think it's it's really it was hard for me to mock a a github web server and then ask for uh, so the, so what is happening with my test cases is that it's actually trying to contact the um, the https github api server and that is creating a problem because the credentials i am providing are are they're not uh, they're not correct credentials so 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 i'm i'm stuck at that point and i am uh, i think uh, i will uh, liam will liam has uh, has told me that he will help me in uh, writing those cases and uh, once i'm able to mock that then i think those test cases are done and we will be able to i have i since i'm talking about the extension i have one more issue i haven't discussed uh, with the mentors is that so for the github branch source plugin git plugin is 
is added within that plugin via the GitHub plugin. So the Git plugins, Git plugins dependency uh, is not directly exposed in the form of the GitHub branch source plugin. The GitHub branch source plugin contains the Git plugin using the GitHub plugin. The Git it, it comes with the GitHub plugin dependencies. I, I checked the dependency graph for the GitHub branch source plugin and that is how I got to know that. So now my problem is that I want to use a class of the Git, Git plugin, which is not available, which, which the GitHub plugin does not have because it is depending on a 4.2.2 version of the plugin. And um, so my, my concern is that if I directly add the Git plugin, the latest version, the snapshot version, version I have to the POM, it creates um, the enforcer issues, upper bound dependency issues. And uh, so I was not able to solve it at that point for, so I did a very bad hack. I just replaced the jar uh, of 4.2.2 .2 with my updated jar in the M2 repository. And that is how I'm working with it right now. But I, I suppose that is also a concern I, I have with that plugin and uh, yes, ma'am. There is a trick used inside the Git plugin where it has an optional dependency on some other plugin. I forget which, which plugin it is that's optional. Matrix, matrix plugin maybe. And inside the source code, it does a dynamic check to ask if an API is available. You, you, that might be an option here, at least short term, that you can use reflection to ask is this API even available? Uh, it's, it's uglier code, it's less attractive code. It's much better if you can update the palm to say I depend on this new, newer version, but uh, a reflective check, is this API even available, is, is used in some other places. Okay, okay. Yeah, another thing you can do it. is try and get a local GitHub build and bump its dependency and <laughs> and then bump to that right. GitHub version. Right. If you're just trying to get like infrastructure and getting this going. But then ultimately when we are, uh, even if we release the latest version of the Git plugin, wouldn't we would have to go to GitHub plugin uh, repository, uh, the maintainers and then update their version of Git plugin so that we are able to use it in the GitHub branch source plugin? Yes, like yeah, what I suggested GitHub. is is probably your, your next PR. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You'll have to change it anyways, so you'll have to send them a PR. So that might actually work out well for your local testing, uh, and you'll also be kind of like testing out that PR as well. If that works for you, um, perhaps you need what what Mark's suggesting too. But, but you'll have to do that okay. at some point. Okay, so um, someone will. So I so for for me the task right now the the first is to add the case I've missed which Mark pointed out with the implementations that if we have Git and JGit Apache, we should uh, recommend JGit Apache and not uh, just look for JGit. That is uh, what I have to add. And the second thing is that uh, functionally, I'm done with the GitHub branch source plugin extension implementation. I think I can, uh, I will wait for Liam for the t for working on the tests, but uh, the class is, uh, is, is done. And I would move on to the GitLab branch source plugin, or should I move to the Gitty branch source? Is there a preference to um, to which branch source plugin we should move on to, or? I would I would guess personally that the GitLab branch source plugin is probably more popular, but you could check stats.jenkins.io or plugins.jenkins.io to see. Here, actually, I'm just going to do it. It's easy to easy to ask the question. How many installations are there are there of the Giddy plugin? Okay. There are one thousand seven hundred. How many are there of the GitLab lab branch source plugin? There are four thousand of the GitLab branch source plugin. So just based on the count of installations, GitLab GitLab branch source wins. Mm. Okay. And actually, if you're already talking to Liam too, I wonder if he would be able to give you an opinion on the credentials thing. 
or GitHub yes, open source? Justin, that, yes, actually, I, I could not. Uh, I should ask him, yes. And I'll ask him when I'm having the conversation with the test, I'll ask him, yes. Yeah. Again, don't need to completely couple this all to especially get tool chooser and stuff like that. But that seems like a good thing to answer for the extensions, especially as you move to other branch source plugins, because you might end up using similar patterns. Yes, agreed, agreed, Justin. That's a great advice. I'll, I'll do that. Because I think it's 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 best if we resolve the authentication discussion before moving on to other branch source plugins. Because if we do not, and then we have to change uh, the Git tool chooser for some reason, then we would have to change all of those branch source plugin extension implementations as well. So yes, that's that's a valid point. I it's like still reversible that. at some point. So you know, don't worry about it if is. you make a mistake or something. We'll do that. So. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I've taken a lot of time today, uh, double of what we usually take. So, so uh, thank you, everyone. Before yeah. before you close, I've got one more open question. Any objections yes. to a release of Git Client Plugin 3.4 so that we have a published version with the unsupported command in it? Go ahead. Good. Okay, no objections. I'll go with it. Thanks. So it'll probably happen within the next day or two. Okay. Great. I think that's it. All Thank right. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thanks. Bye.